Justin Trudeau tests positive for coward 19. I mean, COVID-19, 84. I, I mean, COVID-19. And he condemns this, quote, hateful convoy. Well, what exactly does he mean by that? Well, as we see here, according to Daily High, vile, violent, and hateful leaders denounce Nazi Confederate flags at Ottawa protests. Yes, this now, according to Daily Hive, can't be called a truckers protest anymore. The so-called Freedom Convoy protest in Ottawa this weekend has attracted demonstrators flying Nazi and Confederate flags. Of course, this should not come as any surprise to viewers of this channel, because as I pointed out in this video, we got a great big convoy. Ain't she a beautiful sight? Uh, we said here in this video, Dan Dix of Press for Truth covers the latest Canadian convoy news while warning to watch out for potential agent provocateurs who may try to delegitimize thousands and thousands of peaceful protesters in Ottawa this weekend. And lo and behold, what are we seeing, ladies and gentlemen? Freedom Convoy truckers cause chaos in Ottawa after second day of protests. And what sort of chaos are they referring to here, folks? Well, the mayor of Terry, Fo Terry Fox's hometown in BC calls out vaccine mandate protesters for defacing a statue. Yes, oh no. They, they put a Canadian flag and a mandate freedom sign on Terry Fox. And you'll notice here, if you do that at the uh, uh, statue here in Parliament in Ottawa, it's defaced. Meanwhile, you track this back a couple of years ago to when some people put a, a mask on the very same Terry Fox statue. And of course, back then it was adorned. You see that? The statue of Terry Fox opposite Parliament Hill has adorned with a makeshift face mask, whereas if you want to put a Canadian flag and a mandate freedoms, it's defacing it. You know, it reminds me of when the social justice activists taped up their banners over the reefs of the Dorchester Square cenotaph here, uh, saying, shut down KKK Canada. Uh, nobody seemed to really ha worry about that whatsoever. Meanwhile, when it comes to the trucker convoy protests, I have never seen such a display of hate Canadians say, as demonstrators crowd Ottawa for the third day, Canada's Trudeau says he will not be intimidated by protester abuse. W what exactly is he intimidated by here? Like one moron with a Nazi flag walking around, one agent provocateur walking around with this truck Confederate flag. You know, part of the beauty thing about all of this is that people are recognizing this for what it is and calling out agent provocateurs. I don't know if you've seen this video, guys. Check this out, where this guy gets completely called out for being the agitator and provocateur that he is. See, he's the only one fully masked, of course. How, how convenient. And the protesters rightly so see it for what it is, and they call him out now he's going. Now and he's kick going. him out. We called him out. He knows. He's going to hold his head in shame now. Yeah, so, you know, it, it's nice to see that we're at a point now when, um, you know, we, we have enough people uh, being vigilant of this. You know, I'm glad I warned about it before this thing happened, but now we see they are being called out for it. Um, and other good things are happening, too. We, we see here the great Canadian truckers uh, all the way. Uh, uh, he says, we are with those great Canadian truckers all the way, says Trump, as he throws his support behind the Freedom Convoy as Nova Scotia now threatens $10,000 fines for anyone gathering on highways for anti-vaccine mandate protest, guys. We'll look at that, and I don't know if you knew about this as well. Chaos as convoy descends on Australia's capital to protest COVID-1984 vaccine mandates. Yes, Australian drivers have now taken inspiration from a freedom convoy in Canada to drive to Canberra and protest against vaccine mandates. So indeed, this... Uh, uh, idea is is starting to spread freedom is indeed contagious and it's making its way over to australia and even down in the u.s we're going to talk about all of this guys and much much more in this video but before we do it i see you check me out here at pressfortruth.ca slash donate if you want to contribute to my efforts to continuously counter all this propaganda you can do so by clicking here to make a one-time donation with paypal uh, you can contribute bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies by clicking here um, here you can sign up for a, a monthly reoccurring contribution as well. Um, any amount is greatly appreciated. And here is where you can sign up to my Subscribestar 
Um, I've recently been um, suspended from Patreon, so uh, Subscribestar is a much better platform that is far less likely to censor me. Uh, you can also send an e-transfer to Dan at PressForTruth.ca, or if you prefer to keep it old school, uh, you, you can also send cash or checks or equipment, or simply just words of encouragement to my P.O. Box, guys. Links are all located for all of this in the description below. Once again, thank you so much to anybody who has contributed to my efforts over the years. All right, guys, let's start with this. This morning, I tested positive for COVID-19. I'm feeling fine, and I'll continue to work remotely this week while following public health guidelines. Everyone, please get vaccinated and boosted. As I said on my Twitter, my triple vax protection isn't working, so go out and get vaccinated just like I did. Folks, this is a very, very heavy display right here of what is called cognitive dissonance. Um, now, if you're not familiar with that, just very briefly, we'll, we'll show you uh, in the field of psychology, um, cognitive dissonance is the perception of contradictory information, um, which leads to a, a certain level of discomfort um, within the person who's holding these contradictory beliefs. Uh, the discomfort is triggered by the person's belief clashing with new information perceived, wherein the individual tries to find a way to resolve the contradiction to reduce their com uh, discomfort. Um, so this is a, a massive display of classic cognitive uh, dissonance here, but here's another uh, display of cognitive dissonance as he just recently um, said this, this morning. Get a load of this, guys. I have attended protests and rallies in the past uh, when I agreed with the goals, when I supported the people uh, expressing their concerns and their issues. Black Lives Matter is an excellent example of that. Right. I have also chosen to not go anywhere near protests that have expressed hateful rhetoric, violence towards fellow citizens, uh, and a disrespect uh, not just of science but of uh, the frontline health workers and, quite frankly, the 90% of truckers who have been doing the right thing to keep Canadians safe, to put food on our tables. Uh, Canadians know where I stand. This is a moment for responsible leaders to think carefully about where they stand and who they stand with. Let me know if you caught the unbelievable display of cognitive dissonance in this short, brief little uh, one-minute speech uh, where he says that, you know, he, he's attended plenty of protests in the past like that of the Black Lives Matter rally. Meanwhile, he says it's this trucker convoy crowd who's displaying, quote, hateful rhetoric. Um, I think he may have things a little bit twist-turned upside down, uh, guys. This is just, again, a disgusting display of um, cognitive dissonance, but it gets even worse. He just posted this an hour ago. He says, I know this pandemic is frustrating. It's frustrating that after two years, we're not done fighting COVID-19. Um, but over the past few days, Canadians have been shocked and, frankly, disgusted by the behavior displayed by some people protesting in our nation's capital. He says, I want to be very clear. We're not intimidated by those who hurl abuse at small business workers and steal food from the homeless. Uh, we won't give in to those who fly the racist flags, and we won't cave to those who engage in vandalism or dishonor the memory of our veterans. There is no place in Canada for this behavior, so to those responsible, it needs to stop. And to those who have joined the convoy but are uncomfortable with the symbols of hatred and division on display, be courageous, speak out, do not stand for or with intolerance and hate. And, of course, people have been speaking out. Canadians have been largely peaceful. It's a, a ridiculously small one or two out of the tens of thousands who are doing this. And as I, I said in this uh, tweet here, guys, I had to remind people about this old video. Passion. Get a listen to this. This country is a country of openness, of respect, of compassion, of the rule of law, of the rights of the individuals, of freedom. Freedom from fear, freedom from crime, freedom to love who you want and not be judged for it, freedom to do what you want with your body. Freedom to do what you want with your body. Imagine that, guys. Imagine that. Oh, how times have changed. Um, so let's, uh, let, let's take a look at this um, CBC article. It says Prime Minister has been isolating since one of his children tested positive last week. Of course, the whole family is vaccinated. Justin 
triple vaxxed. He has the natural immunity, so he's what Bonnie Henry calls the super immune. His family's been vaccinated, yet they all apparently keep getting COVID-19. Uh, Again, absolute proof that obviously these things are not working. <clears throat> um, but the fact that he can just tweet out and say, uh, you know, I just contacted it even though I'm triple vax, go ahead and get vax vaccinated, uh, just goes to show you the mental gymnastics that are necessary for people to accept this stuff. Uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said Monday he's tested positive for COVID-1984 and so far he's feeling fine. Uh, Trudeau has been in isolation since one of his children tested positive for the virus late last week. A second Trudeau child has now tested positive for COVID-1984. Trudeau said he would stay in quarantine and work remotely while he recovers. How convenient, ladies and gentlemen. And look at the, 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 the look in his eyes here that he has while he dons this mask. You know, it, it kind of reminds me of the look in people's eyes as I walk around maskless in the grocery stores exercising my 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 intellect and my my freedom this is the same kind of looks i get from uh, other people who uh you know are, are following the lead of, of this guy and this is the looks that i get meanwhile i can't help but just kind of react like this when i get those kind of looks but at any rate let's continue um he says uh, it's been a big challenge uh, to him and his family um as i as i'm face that we're facing but there's nothing unusual or special about it it's a challenge to many Canadians and people around the world who all know all too well, he told uh, a press conference. And that's true. Uh, many, many Canadians' families are completely uh, vaccinated and still <laughs> getting COVID-19. Very, very, very true. Yes, yes, the virus can still uh, be uh, contracted even though you have the uh, vaccine. And even though it's never actually been isolated in a human being, is really just a rebranded flu. Uh, Trudeau got his first two COVID shots last year and received a booster dose in Ottawa just earlier this month. And he's already testing positive and forced to quarantine again. Um, Trudeau urged all Canadians to get vaccinated and boosted as cases of the Omicron variant hit high levels in many parts of the country. And we've expose that at many great lengths guys uh you know you know how many uh, people in the age range of zero to 19 have died from omicron uh zero uh you know what the recovery rate from covid 1984 in general is in that age group globally uh recovery rate 99.9987 percent that means there's a fatality rate of 0.0037 percent i believe it is in the age group of zero to 19 um yet he will convince you to continuously run out and get your young children vaccinated, even though, as he shows and proves, um, his family continues to uh, uh, get sick. The prime minister's wife, um, Sophie, also contracted COVID-19 in the early days of the pandemic. Uh, the prime minister and his family were moved over the weekend from their residence at Redo Cottage over a convoy of anti-vaccine mandate protesters converging on Parliament Hill. The sound of loud honking and cheering filled the city over the weekend as thousands of protesters voiced the, their opposition to various vaccine mandates. Oh no, loud cheering filled the air. Honking. What what a what a nuisance, right? Uh, sporadic honking resumed in the early hours of Monday. Veals continued to block uh, streets in the downtown core. And let's be clear, this clearly is not a fringe minority uh, when you see, like, I mean, just, just look at this. Does that look like a fringe minority to, to you? And, you know, I've never been one who is um, uh, in favor of the idea of blocking intersections or inconveniencing innocent people. You know, like when the Extinction Rebellion crowd does it, that's their goal. That's their aim is to go out into an intersection and shut it down uh, to inconvenience people to raise awareness for their cause. That's not the case with the truckers' convoy. Their, their goal is not to impede innocent people from getting where they need to go. That's just an, an organic consequence of what's happening when thousands of people protest together at Parliament Hill in Ottawa, our nation's capital. I mean, it makes absolute perfect sense. Yet, they are trying to just completely de demonize this thing as being vile, violent, and hateful, all because of one or two flags from a few provocateurs says while we're still concerned with a small group of agitators displaying the swastika we're mortified that other protesters allowed it to continue no no they didn't guys um 
as I said, I warned back in this video for everybody to watch out for agent provocateurs who may try to delegitimize thousands and thousands of peaceful protesters over the weekend. And sure enough, they showed up. Um, here they are. Here they are. And as I said, which is probably one of the uh, most beautiful things from the day is seeing these people confront them. Uh, now he's going. Now he's out. gone. We called him out. He knows. So no, the majority of the crowd is staying uh, uh, peaceful, um, uh, as this guy says, but they're not calling them out. Good people remaining silent is necessary precursor to evil taking root. Uh, yeah, you're you're right about that, but the, the evil isn't coming at the hands of these peaceful truckers. Uh, yes, the, the, there is a, an image being displayed here by what I warned about, agent provocateurs, who I said, as we saw, are now being called out. Um, but as we said, guys, there is, you know, positive things coming out of this as well. As we see here, um, you know, uh, Trump is now throwing his weight behind this. He said on Saturday night he proclaimed his support for Canadian truckers, dri uh, drivers protesting against vaccine mandates, telling a rally in Texas that he's with the drivers all the way. Uh, he uh, praised the convoy's participants for doing more to defend American freedom than our own leaders by far. Uh, we want those great Canadian truckers to know that we're with them all the way, he told the crowd of supporters uh, in Houston. Trump also slammed President Joe Biden's administration for the vaccine mandates affecting federal contractors, large business, health workers, and military. Uh, you know, funny that Trump would even say that when he's the one who launched Operation Warp Speed um, to try to get as many vaccinations into the arms of Americans. So, you know, <laughs> take this man's word with a grain of salt as well. Earlier in this week, Trump's uh, son, Donald Jr., had expressed support for the convoy, saying, we need to see more of that here in the U.S. And, you know, maybe uh, talk of that has started to spread because we're starting to actually see it happen in Australia. This is incredible. Australian drivers have taken up the inspiration from the Freedom Convoy in Canada uh, to drive to their capital. But Victoria's Premier has warned booster shots will be mandatory. So, <laughs> you know, in, in the face of these people uh, descending upon the Capitol, he, he just says, yeah, we're going to make boosters mandatory. Um, protesters from all around the country arrived in the nation's capital on Monday as part of the convoy uh, to, to the convoy to Can Canberra demonstration. The convoy of cars between Pheasant's Nest, uh, NS. W and the Capitol trailed for several kilometers and you know it is quite possible um, that this is going to uh, continue um, I do know that um, that uh, the a large portion of them anyways of the truckers in Ottawa are saying they are in this for the long haul they have no intentions of uh, leaving anytime soon and a lot of the protesters are saying the same thing in fact next weekend is gearing up to be potentially an even bigger party uh, than it was this past weekend. So it looks like there's no signs of slowing happening in Ottawa anytime soon, and uh, rightly so. You know, Canadians are, are pretty fed up uh, with these mandates. Um, you know, they've, they've had enough. The destroying of our economies, the mom-and-pop shops being wiped out, all, all under the guise of this hyped-up fear state, with the, the uh, death numbers being inflated, the cases going through the roof because of the uh, faulty PCR testing. Um, you know, it, it, it just goes on and on, and Canadians are completely fed up and have fully had enough of it. Um, so really, you know, uh, this is this is one of those crux in the road moments. You know, this is like a fork in the road moment in the uh, history, uh, uh, Canada's history, really, where I think in, in a you know time from now, this time will be looked back on as, you know, who was on the side of, of freedom and, and liberty and, and who was on the side of, you know, authoritarianism and all out uh, Orwellian control? Um, well, I hope you guys are going to be joining the right side and uh, and and also not not fearing what these guys are doing and taking that initiative to take the power within your own hands, to step outside of the system, stop being reliant on the banks, stop being reliant on the governments not being reliant even on the grocery stores for that matter by setting up an eventual self-sustainable garden. These are the things that the government fears the most is a strong, independent, fully self-sustainable individual who is not reliant on the banks or the government or the grocery stores and who has a mind who can think for themselves. Uh, that's the enemy of the state. 
That's who we need to continue to work on becoming. Ladies and gentlemen, if you agree, please click that thumbs up button. Share this video with your friends and family who you think need to see this the most. And once again, if you do appreciate my efforts to continuously counter all the propaganda, don't forget to check us out here at pressfortruth.ca slash donate. Uh, once again, links are all located in the description below. And I'd ask that you check me out on subscribestar.com slash pressfortruth. Again, this is um, going to help me with Patreon having recently banned my account, but we can counter that by signing up for a monthly contribution uh, here on Subscribestar. I currently have uh, 78 subscribers. I used to have over 200 over at Patreon. So hopefully we can um, we can build that up, up again uh, here at Subscribestar instead. Um, so uh, if that's something um, you're interested in doing, once again, please check the links in the description below. And that's all for today, my friends. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, don't forget to uh, uh, share this one with your friends and family. You need to see it the most. And stay tuned. We're going to have more video reports coming very soon. This is Dan Dix reporting for Press for Truth. We all want truth. truth. The truth will set you free. free, free.